Audience Audio on? It is. Hell yes. Mike. Oh, both teams got logos this time. They got flags. I, I, this is one of my favorite stuff. When teams have their flags ready. Oh, look at the ASU. They got Pitchfork. Oh, that's so cool. Told you. What's Wildcats? They got a kitty. Oh, it's a Kanka first band. There we go. Got the draft overlay up, and here we go. Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, are yeah. you just uh, swapping over the assets and stuff like that? Yep, just got the overlay in. Once we go into game, I'll take a second to make sure that's in. We have the... All right, everyone. Let me give you another introduction. It is CSL season uh, 2017 to 2018. We are in week number two, and we've got a very special Duel in the Desert Territorial Cup here for you with the Arizona Wildcats, U of A versus ASU, the Sun Devils. Very, very happy to be here. As we've been uh, BSing there in the draft, I am an Arizona native, so I know a bit about the history of these two teams. As far as the colleges go, not the not the Dota teams necessarily. Uh, Golgi himself, his, uh, his girlfriend, his grandparents teach at U of A and spends a lot of time there, so... Got some history going here, and we're into the draft, as you said, a Kunkka ban already. Well, it's something we were talking about during the draft, that Lich first pick coming straight out. Yeah, kind of weird bans from the Arizona Wildcats here with Kunkka, Venge. I mean, those are both very playable supports, but not usually heroes you see uh, ban the first phase, but... I would Maybe not be surprised. Research? I would not be surprised if these teams have been scrim uh, scrimming each other. Oh yeah, I mean that's gotta be it, right? Did, did, you don't really ban these two here unless you know there's someone the other team that really likes these heroes. But um, it's interesting because uh, ASU banned Necro and Venom, and these are just kind of meta bans. I mean, even if they're meta, you can still have a very good Necro player on the team or Venom player, so it's very understandable too. Surprising that Earthshaker actually got through. Um, are they going with Lich Earthshaker? Oh my god, they did. <laughs> Easy game. Uh, all right. Um, Lich. So they got the two top tier um, supports, I would say. These two are the best supports right now. ASU did choose second pick, so with their with their picks out the gate, Spirit Breaker Silencer, uh, I think we can assume or hope heavily that they have a specific strat in mind with this. And... I mean, Silencer picked this early. What's your What's your feeling about that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Silencer does allow for you to kind of draft more flexibly too. I mean, because he doesn't need to be support. Sorry, just just in case, if they, uh, if they don't really have a lot of heroes that counter Silencer as a core, they could just run the Silence the core. But it does seem a little weird to draft him this early. Oh. Now it's possible that they're looking for they banned the anti mage. Um, they could just be looking. Oh wow! Okay, Tidehunter. Okay, so that's team fight. That is uh, just not someone I'm used to seeing as much anymore. They've already got the Tidehunter. Then I was thinking maybe this is like not just like a a pick that is flexible and doesn't give away a strat. I was hoping maybe to see another Enigma this game. Uh, but once now that the tide's already picked, I, I think. That is out the window. Yeah, this is definitely a super team fight heavy team already. Um, two big, super long uh, cooldown ultimates already in the pool. I mean, it's a classic combo. You know, Titan Hunter goes in and ultis and Silencer pops global after a second or two. And then the other team can't really counter initiate. And then <laughs> just take that and then maybe get some objectives. And then play defensively until your cooldowns come back up and rinse and repeat. Isn't Spirit Breaker typically plays a lot better into a pickoff oriented lineup though? Or are they I guess they still have two picks, maybe their cores are they're looking for something global. Um I don't see a nature's profit doing super well in this lineup, but I mean even something like uh let's say maybe they get themselves a life stealer for the spirit breaker and a uh they still have the option of like a storm spirit mid with the silencer on their team, Storm Spirit can can do really well. Yeah. Um, and that'll let them get the pick off, and then and then and then go into the team fight. Yeah, no, I think those are pretty good suggestions. And nice saga coming out. So it is going to be Earthshaker off lane, which I think is still a very good pick. Um, and nice saga is going to be roaming. I I would say the Wildcats draft currently looking is uh, 
currently is looking very meta. Nothing out of the ordinary. We see these heroes all the time. And I think it's going to be... Uh, the thing that's going to be interesting here is how ASU drafts here. Because they're, they're the one that's kind of going out of the norm. Because <laughs> big uh, team fight ulti combos aren't really that popular right now. Yeah, it's a really it's a really momentum oriented uh, meta, and yeah. when when you're really hamstrung by big cool, cooldown ultimates, um, it doesn't let you get that momentum. It doesn't let, let you retain that momentum. Yeah, you you never want to stop right now in this patch. I mean, with most teams, but I guess it I'm... does. It does help them break momentum though too. It does. It does. Um, but the thing is, against a long team, um, long cooldown teams, what you can do is you can fight them. You can lose a team fight against the global and ravage, and then after you come back up, you just fight them immediately again. Just don't okay. stop. Juggernaut, what year is this? Yeah, oh my God, Tide Hunter, Juggernaut. I mean, yeah, Juggernaut is also kind of. I mean, this is super safe, right? This this does feel like a very old school draft. Well, when you're when you're at ASU, you need to be extra safe with the women, especially. <laughs> So, um, I, I like the Juggernaut pick here, uh, at least against the Lich, because the Juggernaut can obviously, usually gets Diffusal Blade, and Diffusal Blade is very good against the Frost Armor. Uh, OD. OD picked into a Silencer, that seems less than ideal, but... Yeah, and also, I mean... And... They, they don't have the burst, though, and it's, it's great just for the Astral against the Omni Slash, so they're gonna have a really hard time bursting anyone especially with an with a uh, astral behind them so there's a little wildcats yeah. despite not that not being a core that goes well into the silencer they still have a uh, you know don't u of a doesn't or US, asu doesn't have great tools to deal with it uh in in the rest of the draft dynamics and od can um put in a lot of damage against the tide hunter at least that's something that he has going for him he doesn't really care about how I think Tide Hunter is because of the, all the pure damage, and since Tide Hunter has very low int, OD can uh, kind of drain out his mana pretty fast. Yeah, he's gonna punish him really bad with that. Um, double double ravage is pretty much off the table this game. Remaining. Yeah, unless you get the initiation on OD. Five seconds remaining. And I think yeah, uh, this game. Going on the OD first is going to be very important because, as you said, the Astral Imprisonment is going to be very powerful against the Ravage if OD <laughs> isn't caught up inside it because OD can get Blink Dagger and I'll just Blink in after the uh, Ravage has been used and just <laughs> imprison whoever that's getting killed. Now, for the final picks coming out, ASU looking for a mid here, I would assume. Uh, it's very, very yeah. much looking like Radiant going with the safety that they have already. <laughs> is, there, is there something that you see standing out or are they still really just like it's pretty unpredictable what ASU is going to pick for their mid right now yeah and even uh, for a core a manta carry wouldn't do bad for the wildcats Five seconds remaining. just to get out of the uh, you know the silencer they could go for troll I mean troll OD is a very good combo I they think that's, on the that's a pretty good prediction. It's the PL! Oh, yeah, okay. Yes! I All love right. it. Um, PL also <laughs> likes being with OD because uh, when he's around him, at least in team fights, he doesn't run out of mana. PL yeah. can sometimes run out of mana even in the late game because he doesn't really get any mana regeneration. His spells cost a lot of mana and he constantly spams his lances, constantly spells double gangers. So there's Five some good things there remaining. and the aoe damage is kind of lacking from asu uh, it's not terrible though because i mean juggernaut can just get like a mjolnir and then uh easily kind of cut down that army yeah and it looks like their their plan is to get i mean if if they have a plan here they want to transition the silencer into a core probably later game i mean that's kind of the the standard the mo or the yeah. uh, it, it depends how much intel he gets, right, in the early phase yeah. of the game. If he gets, like, if he contributes, like, 10-ish kills, then, like, 10, 15-ish kills, then he can easily transition I pretty easily. I sh didn't say it out loud, but I called the squap. I should have I should have said it, because just with their... It feels like, honestly, it kind of feels like ASC is a few patches behind. What do you think? I, I mean, not a few patches. This is, like, a few years behind. This, <laughs> this is a super classic draft. 
Queen of Pain Juggernaut. God damn. Tidehunter, Silencer. Spirit Breaker's meta right now. Um, but everyone yeah, else. Spirit Breaker's very good. It's situational, yeah. I mean, Queen of Pain is, I, I'll say, she's one of the better mids. But yeah, not, not something insane, something that you see every game. All right, here we go into the game. Let me go get your uh, overlays switched out for y'all. Prepare for battle. All righty. We want to introduce these players. We're just gonna roll with it. I might as well. I'm just gonna introduce them while Wave is working on the. I just got it. Stuff. I will go ahead and take the uh, the Radiant team. So on Radiant, we are gonna have Doctor Lobotomy. This is oh, excuse me, and I should say Radiant is U of A. You should have that there on the left side of your screen with Arizona in green and Arizona State in red. Doctor Lobotomy on the Lich. Meanwhile, it will be Cheese Gorilla Cheese on the PL. King will be playing our Earthshaker. Be the boss, boss playing our Night Stalker. And finally, double Redux on the OD. And over on the ASU side, we have Hatred on the Tidehunter. Anthos on Queen of Pain. Sora on the Juggernaut. Carlton on the Spirit Breaker. And finally, Idvo on the Silencer. Both teams. Nothing... Yep, no rune shenanigans going on. Yeah. Nothing funky here, no lane swaps as far as we can see, pretty standard lanes, and uh, I mean, we knew who was going to support, who was going to go what lane, so. No sneaky draft shenanigans here. So as far as the draft goes, um, I will say ASU has a very easy to execute draft, um, but the... They can execute it well in their fights, but it's going to be how they play around their cooldowns. Yeah. Um, whereas U of A is going to have a lot easier time getting momentum, you think? Or is that is that a good way to put it, Golgi? I think I think it's going to be on the ASU side to try to kind of stop the momentum that U of A is going to have. Because, I mean, U of A are just going to, I mean, more easily going to be able to kind of get a pickoffs and kills because... Um, they're not really based on cooldown. They can just kind of keep fighting. And it's going to be on the ASU to kind of group up and try to see if they can take uh, early team fights as a, as a five. So be the boss spending a lot of time here in the off lane with King. Um, the big advantage, we've talked, we've talked this to death, but the big advantage with Earthshaker is that you can hold that first lane and get a reliable level two. That's obviously not going to be the case if you've got someone splitting XP with, with you. What is, uh, how do you feel about this? Mm, yeah, I, I would rather have uh, the Night Sucker kind of be more roaming, but uh, there is a big advantage of uh, giving a dual lane to a Night Stalker for the first morning because then he will have a decent amount of farm and levels for the night to come. So if he can reach level 3 by the night time, I mean, he's in a really good position. That is true, and he'll be able to roam over onto Quap, Quap relying heavily on that blink, so... If he can get that uh, that level three, yeah, as he said, that's that's gonna be his target, I think. Yeah. But the supports on the side of ASU doing a very good job, kind of zoning them out at least a little bit. Yeah, SA says that this is the TI2 winning draft. Oh, is it actually? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working the camera. I'm gonna need you to Google that. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. This really does seem like a few years ago. Tyler just snatches up the double damage unit from double redux here. <laughs> so far, nothing too interesting. Uh, Queen of Pain and Jordan are doing a very good job of last hitting. Final answer not too far back behind. Oh, and actually they find the D Ward in the top lane, and I'm very happy with that one. Charge coming on top. 
Here's a spin. On the King's spin going around. Oh, he's going to juke him a little bit. But the oh, Bash will gosh. keep him in range of the spin. And King are going to go down. Sora drawing the first blood. Now be the boss. He needs to be careful. He's getting uh -oh. charged up as well. It's going to connect. He's stunned. More shots coming in. It, though, easy right clicks. They will get a two kill lead in their safe lane. That is a very good start for the Wildcats. Yeah, we were talking about, I mean, if Sounds getting some good early kills and contributions, he can transition into a late game, and four intelligence stolen this early into the game is exactly what you're looking for as a support here. Yeah, Sounds can get really get dangerous if you allow him a little bit of farming levels in the early game as a support. And not really what you want to be seeing for a uh, dual lane here in the off lane. Usually when you're on a dual lane, you want to kind of hurt the farm of the safe laner a little bit more than this. But, I mean, it's just not a very good dual lane combination, Earthshaker and Night Stalker. Earthshaker just in general isn't a very good dual laner. He's a more of a safe off laner. Night Stalker can go super aggressive if he has the chance to, but... Not with a hero like Earthshaker. So it is the first night time here, uh, but ooh, be the boss did not take any poison to hunter in the night, so he's actually not that much stronger. No extra move speed or attack speed on his side. He does have the extended void duration and the crippling fear, of course. Well, it's quite strange. Usually you see one point in void and the one point to hunter in the night, usually, and then like the second point to void before putting one into crippling fear. Charge coming, Charge on top coming. yep. Once again, King is already getting spun up and not able to make it out. Now be the boss, even taking so much damage. Couple more right clicks, one more is all they're gonna need. Sora's gonna claim it. Two kills for him. And this juggernaut is getting a great start. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, the be the boss gotta start roaming, but unfortunate thing is he can't roam because he doesn't have level three. I think it was a mistake for him to put the crippling uh, second point of crippling fear there instead of the hunter in the night because without that extra move speed he can't really roam and he's actually just sitting in base. What is he waiting for? Okay, he's waiting for a TP. Weird. Um, he's already burned through like a minute and a half of the night, so I guess he's just waiting for level three before he can roam. But they're getting their lane pulled. And Sora also has the phase boots to bring up Aquila, so um, you don't want to get caught by that, especially as the Earthshaker <laughs> with just brown boots. All right, Night Stalker's roaming onto the mid now. Here he comes. He's going to get the silence out onto Quap. Quap is taking some right click damage. Silence up. It's not very long. They use the hammer, but it's not going to do too much. Charge coming forward. It hits onto all three. OD is going to have to has to have to astral up. Taking quite a bit of damage. Itvo is already here with the rotations. They will claim OD for themselves. Yeah, the unfortunately the hammer actually did zero damage there because Queen of Pain actually had more intelligence than the uh, OD, even with those like three arcane orbs. It's just level one arcane orb, so it's only still in one intelligence each. And um, Enthos went for the double null talisman build, so he has plenty of intelligence. Charge him on top again. Oh, this isn't going to be good. He's dead. He's hit. Oh, he doesn't even get the fissure off. Sora spinning up on him again. Meanwhile, Lich going down in the mid lane. Inthos just going a hard mid into three people and making it out. Yeah. Oh, maybe he realized Be the Boss actually was out of mana on the Night Stalker, so he knew he was free to jump in without getting silenced. Yeah, laning stage not looking very good. Even bot lane, Hatred going super aggressive. Even cutting the lane really deep to make sure it's not pulled and uh, the Radiant can't contest the pull. And it looks like Beta Boss is actually kind of rotating into the bot, but Tidehunter is a very hard hero to kill, especially hitting level 6 already. I don't think they can kill us. Oh. Sorry, I'm trying to... I actually... Isn't it... Isn't that... Wasn't tied on the TI1 draft? Now, 
I didn't even play Dola back then. I think P PL wouldn't have been out at that time, but... Plot. Tied, Carson yeah. To Jug. Yeah, it's gonna be on boss. He cancels it, Carlton. Arms for the dead. Okay, no, it was TI2 that had Tide, but... Other than that... Nothing really the same. So laning phase isn't looking very good. I mean, <laughs> kind of understatement to say it's not looking very good. 0 to 8 for UOA here. And even falling behind on CS quite heavily too. 55 last is on the Juggernaut while only 45 on the PL. Mid lane is even looking worse. 46 for the uh, Quap while only 34 for the OD. And actually, where is OD right now? Is he up farming the jungle? It doesn't look like he was. Trying to catch up a little bit, getting his boots out. Yeah, and usually OD kind of wants to pick up a hand of Midas, but this game might be hard to get that online. Mm. He's struggling to get this uh, power treads. The first tower being threatened here, the top lane. UA is responding, but they kind of respond in a very obvious manner here. So they won't be able to pick any kills off of it. It's going to drive um, as you away from their tower. After that pretty oppressive start from ASU, oh, Hatred now taking a lot of damage from Gorilla Cheese, but he's just able to walk it out. He's not even. He's not even worried right now. Anchor Smash, yeah. more than enough to stop this Gorilla Cheese damage and clear out the illusions. The only damage that Gorilla Cheese is doing to Hatred is uh, from <laughs> the Spirit Lance. Yep. Yeah, his, his right clicks are doing nothing against that Anchor Smash. He's level 4 Anchor Smash, yeah, no way. Yeah, and look, Hatred's super low, but he's just, a, like, of course, you know, level, level 4 Anchor Smash. It's classic Tide on her. Able to just continue yeah. this lane. If his lane is pushed too far forward, he's back up. Getting that. Finally going to go back to base. He's got his level 6. He's got his Tide Hunter, or his Ravage up. Uh, I'd like to see him move into another lane now to use this Ravage. It's no no sense to just hang on to it. Or do they do they really even need to use it right now, Golgi? He's doing so well in this off lane. Do you think maybe he should give this yeah. XP to someone else and go fight somewhere? Cross create space, or can no one really sit here against Cheese? Charge top game? lane, actually. King is getting gone on pretty King. hard. He does not have a shrine right now. It's on cooldown for another two minutes. They're chasing him down. Sora's ready to find him. He's got the Omni Slash. That was a little bit um greedy there to use the Omni Slash. Anthos actually was about to cut him off, but Sora is just saying, "I'm the carry. I need the kills." 402 now for him. And this tower taking plenty of damage. Another Tower's charge forward on the boss. It's just going to be a harassment one. Itvo is here to throw the curse on him. Yeah. Itvo already 14 stolen intelligence, which means he can freely kind of spam away those spells without worrying about running out mana. <clears throat> and they're devoting so much resources everywhere to the mid and the top that hatred is just bullying cheese. Yeah. Look, he's going to have a oh, time King of his life cutting this now. Again. Once again, charge. Oh, King getting caught under the tower. He's going to use the enchant. Carlton takes a oh a chain frost to the face, followed up by a nice blast. They will get their first kill on the board. Wildcats taking down a devil. Not a very good um, game for King so far. 0-5-1 and one, the Earthshaker. Just haven't been able to find his footing here. He, the boss, is going to at least deny up this tower. But Look as the hatred, team, though. Look at the space yeah. that they're making. Yeah, it, it, as a team that should be kind of pushing the pace here as the uh, UOA team right now, because this this they they're losing the lanes right now against the team that actually just gets stronger with items and um, you know team fights. But right now they're getting picked apart just individually. Oh. Once they start team fighting, it's going to get really dangerous too. Yeah. Well, she's going to TP He has to TP out. He saw Sora here, and he knows that his lane is getting pushed. That it'd be really easy to clear these illusions and use an Omni. It's only 25 seconds till the next one's up. 
Yeah, very smart. I, I think he did make a small mistake TPing Fountain there because he had full health and basically full mana. He could just TP into the top shrine and continue to farming. But I'm assuming he just double clicked to get out there ASAP. And here they are. Look, with Hatred here clearing these waves, they have no way to contest these towers. Yeah. And they know they can't They can't really team fight into them with a Ravage in the wings. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be fighting inside on right now. Oh, they missed the last hit on the tower. So at least a little bit of good Charge news. Coming in mid. It's on to King again. <laughs> it's going to be canceled, though. There's four here in the oh, mid. Oh, Queen gets caught. Yeah. Gonna get, oh, oh the fissure is going to be a little too soon. Oh, that's rough. Enthal is actually even going for a first item, a Lincoln Sphere, which I think is a very good idea against Night Stalker. Yeah, even the uh, Astral is a great setup to get people in range. Look at these dire words. They know everything. Carlton's going to charge forward. He gets it onto Earthshaker. So Global Silence is used now. Ravage onto three. They're going to use the Scream as well. Bebos trying to run away. Dagger onto Lobotomy. Enthos just jumps forward and is ready to go. Chain Frost is used. This is going to be devastating if they can't get out of the way. Invo goes down to the tower. They will clean up the Lich and lose one in the process. That was a great... I mean, one kill is beautiful there to get that Chain Frost off. Very good, uh, very good recognition from the Lich that they were very far forward with no creeps and it was going to be a great time to use that yeah. Chain Frost. But they're going to be able to get a tier 2 tower and um, yeah, I feel like so far UA's rotations have been kind of predictable and uh, I think that one over there was definitely a one team fight for ASU because of these wards. They had the ward down here in the jungle and one up here so... Um, <coughs> UA kind of walking these two paths through the jungle was sighted. And at this current. Oh, charge forward coming on a B boss. Oh! oh what a that fissure. fissure is the game saver. Hatred taking a lot of damage here. They've got an Echo Slam. It's onto two Enthos taking a lot of damage. Hammer's going to get dropped. No one's going down yet. It's actually going to be Nice Stalker and King going down. Carlton in a bit of trouble. He's going to charge. Oh, he just charges into PL. Makes him take a little bit more damage. He's going to have to use his illusion. Pop out. Sora still ready to fight. Into Cheese. It making her way away. Sora's going to be able to spin forward, putting the damage in, but it has to be very careful right now. They get an Astral onto Tidehunter. That will stem the aggression for now, but three down to U of A. Only losing one with ASU. They're going to back up, and that's... they. It, you know, this is what I was about to say before that fight started, is that ASU isn't even really worried about their, uh, their team fight cooldowns. They're still yeah. ready. They put so much pressure in this early game, and they're fighting as a team so much that they don't need those big ults right now. They, if they keep this pressure up, they will not be bound to those ult timers. Yeah, they're so ahead right now, and they had a great recognition there that um, even if they uh, UA decide to engage, that they could uh, probably win the team fight, and it was the right call to make. It was pretty close. Uh, four of them almost went down, but that doesn't matter when you win a team fight like that, especially with your ultimates down and. You know, Ravage is going to be up in 10 seconds. So if you think, you know, that fight was close, the next fight isn't even going to be even, like, remotely close with Global Silence and Ravage up. Yeah, top three net worth positions all handily taken by ASU. PL in fourth uh, below the Tidehunter. Tidehunter having the time of his life. He's got his mech up. He's going for his blink next. Do you think he'll be going for something like an Ags into Refresher this game or maybe complete out the Guardian Greaves first? Um, eggs for Tide Hunter? Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, probably not eggs. I, I could see Refresher. Uh, probably go for hmm, something like Shiva's first, because it's a really good item for a uh, really good game for Shiva's here. With the uh, PL. So, PL, Dice Stalker, and OD. All these heroes uh, attack quite fast, and they rely on attack speed. They up, they're charging forward. They found King again. Oh, no. It's going to hit. They've got the Nether Strike carries through. They blow him up. Oh, Lobotomy. You got to be careful. You might, yourself might get lobotomized. Enthos coming in with a Haste Rune. Just going to start putting the damage to him. Nice Stalker needs to be careful. A Blink Forward is going to stop that Chain Frost. Carlton caught under tower, taking a little damage. Meanwhile, the rest of the fight on the other side cleaned up the OD with no problem. Boss trying to run away, but Sora's going to find him silenced up just before that Omni Slash goes out. Will keep him alive for a little bit longer, but 
towers will be going down. PL doing a good job, just recognizing he can't get to that fight. He can't fight. He's going to get an objective for himself. Yeah. He does have a TP, though, if he, need, if he do need to TP back, although it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. There's no way they can contest that right now. Their global is still up, so... ASU, however, they're trying to make rotations into catching the PL, and PL actually out of mana right now. Okay, no, no, he does use a stick, so he has a mana to TP. He's Charge, yeah, he down. Safe. <clears throat> Is that Diffusal Blade on Sora? Yeah, that's a Diffusal Blade. Finish up on Sora there. So what's what's U of A's recovery mechanism here? Dodge fights, get farm, and then they can hope to maybe bait out some ultimates and, and counter? Yeah, I mean, the problem is, even if they want to dodge team fights, right? Um, ASU are probably going to fight man and start pushing towers, right? So what they got to do is they try to go, go for smoke. <coughs> and right now, um, kind of these team fighty teams kind of have a flow of use their big ulties, team fight, win the team fight, and then divide and farm the map until their uh, cooldowns come up. This is the time you gotta strike as the other team. You gotta smoke up and find the people who are farming by themselves and then kill them and try to use that momentum into taking some objectives on your own. Or at least, yeah, that's what we were saying. ASU looked like they had the, the team to stop momentum, but really that's, uh, they've had nothing but momentum and it's U of A really that needs to put a plug into ASU's momentum right now. Yeah, most definitely. Um, it's going to be very rough too. Do they have a? Oh my God! Look at King's item right now. He doesn't. He's so far from the blink dagger, and that blink dagger could come in really huge here if they had the chance. And of course, um, Gorilla still quite far from his Manta, which he's going to need to fight against this balancer here. I think as long as he gets it before ASU starts trying to crack the high ground. Then he has a really good, you know, echo counter initiation. Yeah. And that's kind of their last hope is let let the creeps get high ground, let ASU try to come high ground, and then counter with a uh, with an echo slam. Now Carlton, once again ASU smoked up, charge coming through. Who did they find? They found PL in the mid. Oh, it's gonna connect onto him. They get the oh, silence no, as well. Silence. Here comes another strike. Pan Phantom Lancer, just getting completely removed from this game. Beautifully executed there. Definitely worth a global sound for the Plosion 1. And he's dead for 40 seconds, so it's going to give them plenty of time to take this tower. But, oh, UA wants to fight. All right, it's uh, worth a shot. Night Stalker's going to get charged. Here comes the scream. Redux and Lobotomy. Redux is going to be able to get oh out of there. He dodges the, his Ravage, but he's still a little low. He's trying to get the damage. He gets Sora. He's going to head back to the high ground. He's got an Astral. He's safe for now, but... He's caught in a little bit of a bad spot. Enthos does not have the mana, but a charge will be more than enough. They're going to claim all five heroes, losing the Juggernaut for themselves. Now, the luck, the good thing here, U of A, it's so early in the game. Respawn timers are low. They get a good fight, take five, but they can't claim any high ground objectives out of it. Yeah. Surprisingly, a 4 for 1 exchange there, and the gold change was 767 gold over to Yove, and only 1000 gold over to S uh, or, or ASU. Wow. So only a 300 gold difference. That shows you how behind. far behind they are right now. 13k gold behind at 21 minutes. So a 4 for 1 trade was only a 300 gold deficit. Yeah, I, I think that taking that fight was a little ambitious there without Gorilla Cheese. He is their most farmed hero right now, and uh, they really can't be uh, trying to take fights when they're disadvantaged. Because you're 13k gold behind, if you fight without Final Answer, that's also like 8k gold less. They find Carlton. This is, this is gonna be worth good money, but they're gonna have to fight into ASU now. Echo Slam, it's gonna come. It just hits onto two. Now, so much damage from, coming from the Quap. The Gorilla Cheese trying to fight. He's just fighting an illusion at this point. Redux is caught. They've got the Diffusal up on Sora already. Here comes the Chain Frost. It's gonna bounce around, do some pretty good damage, but ultimately not able to claim it. It bounces to the Ancients, but it's gonna burn out on the Ancients. Gorilla Cheese almost gets the kill onto Juggernaut. Well, gets the kill, but. They have an Aegis for themselves, so it's going to be just more money going the way of ASU. 
Ugh, that one was a 1k swing towards ASU. Yeah, I mean, at least they got the Aegis off of Sora, so they have um, maybe a chance of winning this. Uh, Final Lancer is going to buy back here. Hatred caught in the wrong side of the fence here. He shouldn't let me out. no damage for him. Oh, <laughs> if Cheese yeah. is a little bit sooner, he tries to throw the, throw the Spirit Lance, but Enthos obviously rushed that uh, Lincoln Sphere. Yeah, you need double Redux there to kill him. Yeah, he's the one with the pure damage. And actually, only still only two levels on Arcane Orb, so he too isn't even hitting that hard. But yeah, he, he's, he's your, you know, resident uh, Tidehunter killer. But he was still waiting for respawn. Looking still a little bleak here. I mean, yeah, I, at this point, you might be just spelling out the inevitable here for U of A unless they do something quite miraculous. I also think it's a little bit weird that Gorilla Chase decided to go for that Power Treads this game. I thought it was a perfect game for a, a Boost of Travels PL game. Because one of the ways you can counter a team fighting team is to split push the map so hard that the other team can't really push very easily. With a boost of travel, you can cut lanes, the lane that turned to push, and then just constantly push out the other two lanes. Charge coming through on Kirilla Cheese, it's gonna get cancelled. Golgi, this may be improper, but I just bet 180 on uh, on ASU for this game. What do you think? Did you actually? They Well, they added um, right now in the CSL chat, you can do exclamation point bet the team ASU U of A and looks like you start with 180 points so you know oh I mean go you, wait, you can bet after the game starts yeah yeah they're testing it you know so <laughs> what? You, like can, so you can bet when it's 6 and 29 yes yeah I'm, with, I'm, with I'm, a 17k I'm gonna, gold lead I'm gonna go all in like just like before the ancient falls and I'm just gonna make big money I was a little bit scared there because I thought you'd uh, uh, like bet real money no. somehow. <laughs> yeah, on all the uh, college star league, collegiate star league betting platforms. Hey man, there are a lot of like shady betting platforms out there. I won't be surprised. I'm so big guy. smoke play here for ASU. Yeah. Find the boss. Oh, they're gonna ravage him immediately into the global silence. He's caught right now. It's actually Night Stalker is the one that they blew everything on. Now, Chain Frost coming in. It's going to keep him back for a little bit. Omni Slash going forward. It'll claim one now. King getting spun up, trying to stay alive. Oh, very nice. The Astral is going to save him for a little bit longer, but <laughs> not for too much longer. Oh, my. They're still forcing him back, though. Low respawn timers. Keeping him yeah. in this game. There's a buyback also on the Lich, so you can ice armor the towers. Which is very hard to push against, and you can't diffuse all the armor off the top. Big charge! Through. It's gonna hit on the three! Now they're gonna eat a scream, nether strike into double redux. They've already got PL. OD had to astral. He's trying to stay alive. Nice force staff, but he just can't make it away. Does have a buyback. He's gonna be forced into using it. Boss is still here on the I'm high ground, fighting away. That. He's going down to the low ground. Beautiful force staff there. They've got another. Fissure blocking up Hatred. He doesn't have a four staff. No way to get out of this one. They're finally <laughs> bidding into him. It's taken forever. <coughs> but the tide will finally turn. It's unfortunate because I think, I mean, I, we've seen really good Fissures from King. It just, just has not been his game. I, I can tell that he's a, a very good Earthshaker player with his Fissure positioning, but man, he just got off to such a terrible start. He has, like, trapped Tidehunter at least uh, three, four times this game alone. Yeah, the amount of times, the amount of pressure that ASU applied in the top lane and basically just picked on King. That's really yeah. what it was, is they targeted him hard. Yeah. And you know what? I can see why. Yeah, exactly as you said. He's a very skilled Earthshaker player. We can see that in the few opportunities that he's had to make plays. He's making plays. It's just so hard to lane up against a Juggernaut with CC. Especially once he gets a good, good good start and gets phase boots like three minutes into the lane. Super rough. <laughs> yeah, 
maybe having the dual lane with uh, be the boss was a bad idea. Because it really did cut into that experience gain for King, <coughs> which meant he uh, also didn't get a lot of money. Because usually, as a Earthshaker in a very bad lane, what you want to do is get a Soul Ring and just spam Fishers. But he couldn't even do that because he got like no money in the early phases of the game. Yeah, as we as we commented earlier, though, it wasn't. It's not necessarily that they're playing poorly or it was a bad decision. We understand the rationale behind it and we can yeah. get behind it. But ASU just. Punished it and capitalized on it too well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for good news, King does have his Blink Dagger finally. So maybe we can see some chain stuns finally from the Echo Slam here. He isn't going to be doing a lot of damage off the Echo Slam. It is still only a level 1 Echo Slam. But he does have that level 4 Aftershock to be able to stun the enemies. It's the important part. At least for right now. I just don't know how they're going to deal with this Tide, though. That is so tanky. Another smoke up from ASU. They are ready to go. They are just using these things on cooldown. Sora's up on the high ground. Is he baiting? Trying to get a response here? Now, Yuve does have pretty good ward coverage here. Um, Be the boss might want to think about TPing back. He has TP on his backpack with an empty slot in his inventory. You might want to have that in your inventory, dude. Here comes the initiation. And Lich isn't Silence. there either. Immediately PL, OD, and Airshaker gonna go down. Lich and Night Stalker left to defend this on their own. I don't think they can repel flavor of this magnitude. Yeah. So we're going to take a decent amount of damage. Oh it's god! Chain frost. Yeah. Put some mileage in. <laughs> Getting a little too much mileage. But yeah, nothing these two supports can do to stop this push. I'm very uh very surprised there. The supports were kind of pushing up bot lane. They were like super far out. They were like in this area instead of being in base. So. They get the melee and just move straight over. They're not worried about the range. They're going to be able to claim two melees here. Going to be pretty difficult to repel them. Ten seconds for OD. They might be able to make something happen with PL. But if ASC is playing this right, they back immediately after they take this barracks. And there they go. Sayonara! Oh, there is a blink in. Wait, even the Spirit Breaker is so tanky. They'll get him. They'll have some burgers tonight. He, he wasn't able to find a charge target, unfortunately. So he's going to go. Well, actually, he did charge. He's, it just went on cooldown because he got stunned up. Now transitioning over to the Roshan. Even though Spirit Breaker is dead. If they do this, I think, uh, engage, he can always buy back and charge in. So they're not worried at all. And we'll send Idvo as the guinea pig. On the high ground, in case they want to kill someone. This is going to be a living ward here. And 44 intelligence stolen by Edvo. Oh my god, he is hitting like a core. He is the core at this point. He's got his four staff, he's got a dragon lance up. He's very close. He's already actually got his Hurricane Pike recipe out and will be working on an Atos next. Basically a core at this point with the Hurricane Pike. And we are at that critical mass. 31k net worth lead in a 31 minute game. That 1k a minute is pretty much a death knell. I can't think of a game. Oh, so hey, if you want to see Sparky, you can go look at the uh, Dire Fountain right now. Oh yeah, I actually saw it earlier. That's some old school logo. That reminds me of like, some like Sunday cartoon type of stuff. That is actually an old logo. Um, the new logo is just the pitchfork. Uh, and it's a little oh, more modern. Why did they get rid of Sparky? I think he's a cool guy. I like he is a cool guy. He's still the mascot. Right. Yeah, I'm assuming they're pitch for the these flags here. That's Meanwhile, Wildcats, on. Wildcats Wilbur is looking extremely modern looking. Look at that guy. That's some 2017 shit right there. Yeah. Nice and clean. 
All right, so we're going to the final tier three here for Yoe. We'll see if they can muster up a last stand. And so far, ASU playing so careful. And they, they know they don't need to play anything aggressive here. They can just kind of keep doing this, play carefully. And just take one objective at a time. And Sora with a Mjolnir finished, so he has no problem dealing with these illusions either. And the creeps even take the range racks in the mid. Oh, and they accidentally popped the shrine. He's not going very good. Tier three getting beat on by Sora. Well, Sora looking a lot Sora's of mana. Sora's eating damage right now. PL is at a state in the game where just illusions. If he can get them out, he can build an illusion mass. Ooh, and great micro there. Um. Gorilla Cheese microing his illusions actually instantly destroy the healing ward as soon as it comes out. So Sora's gonna be a little bit upset about that, but Anthos gonna give him some sips of his bottle and it's going to be a okay. Just to get out. Also, he does have the Aegis. Here we go, charge coming forward. Carlton, he's gonna get blocked up by the Fissure. He's in the front line. Ravage only gonna hit onto one, but here comes the Omni Slash into the Global Silence. They're beaten away right now. PL is down. It's a buyback on the Night Stalker. Redux trying to fight the Carlton. Oh, but a scream is gonna hit so many. They try to counter with the Echo Slam, but it doesn't do enough. And he goes down. Now Sora dying, but he's got the Aegis. He'll be able to spin his way back to the tier three. And he makes his way now. They're down two and gonna have to fight into four. Itvo, they wanna try and damage him, but he hits so hard right now. Here it goes, a Orchid used onto OD. OD? Taking some damage, but Enthos just not doing enough on his own. That's fine. They are claiming buildings, objectives, objective base gaming. ASU is gonna get the mega creeps. Oh, he looks barely gets out of there. He has decent bit of mana stolen, uh, intelligence stolen rather. 39 so far, but still no ulti, and GG is finally get called. I, I mean, I do respect. Uh, Yove for sticking it out. Um, the game looked pretty rough there, but they tried to hang on, see if there was a chance they can come back. But yeah, that was that was an uphill battle. All right, everyone, that was ASU versus U of A, the Sun Devils versus the Wildcats game number one. Congratulations to Arizona State. We'll see you guys shortly in game two. I'm gonna bring you to the wait screen, but we're gonna continue talking because uh, lots to talk about in that game.